They heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. Book it. That's not booking it. We gotta hide. Two five nine K. Pull off this instill still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said two at fifty nine. Sorry. You really think about what we did here? We saved the whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. Who loved them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey! Don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> he just walked away. <laughs> Weirdo. Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing at graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Who's the this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover? Who are you helping? If you look what they did, they lied to everyone! Blah, blah, blah. Look at Von Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you acting like a horse's ass, I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah! Here in this merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? Not mention something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure, it would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? He flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. Locate the source. All right. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Help's on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh heavens no! Do I seem like a killer Mickey to you? And Luca yeah. Shared a skeptical look. <laughs> well, do I? Ah oh, shucks! Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. He sucks. Wait a minute. Yeah, if this is the original town, then that means. Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. What's that? Long story. So a few years back I, uh, came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's a long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. No, you didn't. Iggy stifled a chuckle. He started the chicken coop fire? Yep. I just want to give you guys a little scare. And like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I'm gonna underestimate things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rolo got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash evidence in Lilo. So I buried him under that tree. But when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown up found him and tossed him. triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved, it was us. Unbelievable. Wait, we got explosives. Cool. Do you think this is a game? You slash bio. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who's in way over his head. 
but Harry was just someone who never refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotten children's brains. Everything went thanks to Harry, especially this man, he's a superhero. I always partial to hang a topic myself. Is that so? Do you think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. Ooh. Crooked. It's like this whole stick in place. Aha! Nothing else around here. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa! I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. I will, but they dig a hot giant hole. I think this is it. Repeat the source. This is the source? It's a dang hole. How do we smash a hole? Ah, oh, snap, they found us. That's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr. Where's Rollo? I was in line before he's safe. Well, safer than you two at least. John, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Her gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? That's a doozy of a question. This is a source where they collect the unrefined. Uh... Scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh heavens no, my role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various complications. Complications like us. You are a spot really. face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are descended to strike for greatness. Are you gonna push him in the hole? And others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. Point is that we all play our part in life. I just happen to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras, ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile's not gonna be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Her snapped his fingers. Clipboards. Scene change. There, that's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop! Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you, we're gonna one of my specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Nothing, nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. Ah, uh, you know, I'm an exceptional liar. Need it. Ba -ba -ba, that's a far enough. Iggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool. Call off your goods. After a long pause, sweating. Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You all can head back for the night. It's been a long day. On these two from here. Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. Yes. Just this now, Iggy. You can put that down. What? Like this? With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Well. Oh! 
Whoa. With a growl, Kerr leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Oh, snap. Oh, no! Iggy tried to twist away, but in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. His Don't let go, Iggy! Was precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. Take the coat off! You reckless child, I'll be done! Look and listen to me! Hold on tight and use the walkie talkie to call them back. Now, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference, they're always listening! If you doubt, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both! The only way you get out of this is if Kerr is out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself! If you let's go, we both die! I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. Damn! Iggy Stone Cold! Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Long life? Oh, you know, I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phyllis Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. Dum dum. Property dum dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? Oh. <laughs> of course. Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Girl, just let go. No can do if you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loose in his grasp. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just no good bully. Like you, Kerr. Iggy, no! I felt his hand slipping. I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for us to fall together. I could use travel in packs. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh, crap! <sighs> ah! Oh, man. This is so intense. Oh, man. Oh, uh, I'll go. I'll, I'm going to have to do both of them. I feel like refuse might be the bad one or is accept the bad one. I don't know. But refuse. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time. But Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. The end. Yeah, I knew that was the bad one. Hmm. <laughs> I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. All right, let's go back. A slow and fall. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With 
the quiet link, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. There's a lot of fireworks. Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Oh, jeez. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before a perennial harvest arrives. Until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved us, town. For a little while, anyway. How? Tempest glucomine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. Doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. The sole side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the whole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. If some luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. Sure to think what would have happened in that we case. Have some idea what that would look like. Because of the explosions! It'll take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. No, the stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have. In my own way. Each of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn. You are going to save the world. With a chuckle, Nat turned and walked west. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in... Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> Revenge served cold. <laughs> Second time's a charm? Why? Why is this? But wait, oh, wait. It's his, um, it's his, it's, uh, Rolo's, um, pen. Hmm. Wait, that's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger, just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. Alright, let's go back in.